pools and data sets. You'll find in your ZFS journey that there's a lot of concepts that you understand that have different names. They're intentionally renamed because they don't do things the way that you typically understand them. Pools is kind of like volumes, but it's not a volume. It's much, much more than a volume. Same with data sets. Data sets are like, kind of like file systems, but they're more like a set of data rather than a way to lay out files in a system. So let's start off by defining these terms. Pool is a, it can consist of a bunch of disks, right? I can just throw a bunch of disks in a pool. I also can take those disks and put them into a bunch of RAID sets, right? So I can take a RAID 5 set, multiple RAID 5 sets, and put them all into a single pool. The thing about ZFS, naturally, you can't build something that's striped because it just naturally stripes. If you give it just a bunch of plain disks, it'll just naturally stripe across those disks. So um, when you're when you're creating your pool to begin with, you think a little bit about how you put put the different pieces together. But the whole concept of the pool is just to have this big pool of disks. Take all your disks and throw them into the same pool. People ask me all the time, do they have to be the same size? Do they have to be the same type? No, 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 no. Um, you can build a pool. I mean, I could build a pool out of a 100 gig drive, a 4 terabyte drive, and a you know, 3 terabyte drive. Um, it will stripe across those drives until one of them's full and then it'll just fill the other two and then it you know until those are full and then um, so on and so on so it doesn't have to be the same type kind anything like that uh, probably preferred if you do but uh, not necessary the other term we want to get defined is a data set the reason that it's not a file system is that it's more of a logical boundary than an actual physical boundary. And I'll talk a little bit more here in a second about that. Now, data sets are sets of data, sets of like data. Well, how do you put those sets of data together? Well, for the same reason that you create file systems, um, a data set typically is a point at which a certain set of data can be shared out or can be backed up or has a specific set of permissions. Um, there's also a kind of data set in ZFS called a Z volume, and that's where we take a set of blocks, right? It's not a data set. It doesn't, um, you don't put files on it. It's blocks that you use something else to create the file system. So uh, one of the problems that ZFS tried to solve is that, you know, SAN was really trying to solve all these problems um, uh, that, that file systems have. And if you think about what a file system is supposed to do, it's supposed to make a decision about where to put data on the disk itself. So SANs just present disk, right? All they do is, is send a block map to a disk. It can do RAID underneath, it can maybe do snapshotting, maybe some checksumming, but it still doesn't know anything about the file and the file data. Uh, when ZFS was being designed, file systems really stuck in this old paradigm of one file system, one disk or LUN, or RAID set, or, you know, LUN is what we typically say. But the file system's job is to create metadata about the file and then map the actual file data to physical blocks. And RAID really can't solve that problem. It can, you know, probably when they started with RAID, they should have thought about things like, well, if I want this data sent to two disks, maybe I should tell the file system to send it to two disks. Instead, instead we kind of tricked the file system into believing there was still just one disk underneath. Fundamental problem with most uh, file systems is that the volume management or the RAID or the creation of the lawn is done by some other entity. 
Uh, sometimes that's a good thing. Sometimes it's not a, a good thing, especially when you look at sand architectures. You know, a sand architecture is this kind of idea that you have a big, huge set of discs, but that you want to... Um, you want to take that disc and assign it to different hosts to to attach it. You have all this terminology that you had to build out, things like thin provisioning and deduplication and you know all of these things that you try to do in the SAN that really should be done inside the file system, not be done in, in the SAN at a block level. So SAN and, and RAID tried to solve all the problems that were problems that were inherent in the file systems themselves. Now, one of the problems with file systems, too, is that they're not ubiquitous, right? NTFS, maybe. Um, you know, HFS, HSFS, maybe. Um, you know, you, you look across all the different platforms and you, you can't really find a file system that's, that goes across all boundaries. Maybe NTFS, but, um, you know, the, the idea that you're going to run everything in an enterprise on NTFS um, might not be a good, a good solution to all the problems. So we um, needed to fix the problem in the file system and then make it open source, make it ubiquitous. So with uh, OpenZFS, what it does that's different than the rest of file systems you may be have knowledge of is that it keeps track and has knowledge of the disks, the underlying disks. It has block maps of all the disks or RAID sets. Um, and it keeps a block map for each of them so that when it's time to lay data out on that disk, uh, on those disks, it knows it has disks and it can do things like, you know, stripe across the disks. It can do transaction processing rather than block based um, mechanics and um, it, it can um, stripe, right? And it can do things like there's a dynamic stripe width in every, in every transaction. If you have a, a bunch of 1K writes that need to be sent out to disk, ZFS can bundle those all up into a single transaction and send it out to all the disks that are in the pool. So we can have some uh, performance benefits of that um, and then the data sets are laid on top of this. So um, each of the data sets have uh, very specific boundaries around them. Um, but when the actual disk I.O. gets down into the lower parts of ZFS, ZFS just kind of bundles them all up together and sends them out to disk. So probably one of the best parts of ZFS is how easy it is to use. If you look at when I started as a, a system administrator, we were system administrators. We managed the systems and the network and the storage and everything. Um, and over the years, storage got storage and network both got so complicated that you had to have separate people just managing the network and just managing the storage. Um, network hasn't got any less complex, but with ZFS, the system administrator can do ZFS because it's two commands and it's so easy to understand and, and work with that it, it can be part of the system administrator's job. So there's two commands, there's zpool, and its job is to put disks into the pool or just manage the disks or devices in the pool. Um, and all that disk space is shared across all the data sets or file systems. Then ZFS's job is to create and manage the data sets themselves to help create those clean lines, those sets of data. Um, and then inside of ZFS, there's about 40 different things, more than 40 things, sometimes more, sometimes less than uh, right around 40 things that you can make different per data set. So um, ZFS also allows you to set different variables on your data sets creates real clean lines though and if you have permission to get in access to one data set no way you can get into another data set so be able to create permissions um, and uh, control of who gets access to what data so when we look at these commands more deeply uh, zpool really three different things you're going to do a zpool you're going to create something you're going to create a pool you're going to add to a pool destroy a pool um, those are you know the three main things that you'll do you'll also there's a number of commands that we'll look at a little bit later here on um, moving disks around in the pool 
Um, when you create, you usually have to say, I'm going to create a mirror or a raid set, or uh, you don't have to specify stripe, it'll automatically stripe. But when you create that pool, you that's where you define your raid set. And I'll show you how to do this here in a second. We also have ZFS create and then get and set and destroy. Um, ZFS uh, file systems data sets are really easy to create and destroy. Create, when you create a ZFS data set, it takes almost no space. Um, and you're used to, if you're used to doing like format a file system, when you format a file system, it writes all kinds of data out onto the disk. When you create a ZFS data set, it really just writes a very small amount of information into the super block. Same with ZPool, when you create it, writes almost nothing on the disk. It writes a, a little bit of information at the beginning and the end of each disk. All the space in the pool is considered free space until you actually have data to write. So I already talked about this. So let's get into some of these commands and we'll show you how to uh, use ZFS. So let me show you first how I'm running this demo. You can do this on your own. Um, I'm running the VirtualBox and I'm running OmniOS. Probably the um, one of the most you know, widely held distribution that uh, closely maps um, Solaris um, and is, is very uh, actively developed. So I have this running over here. I have the IP address of this is uh, 192.168.1.45. I could just do it over here in my little virtual box console. I'm going to do this though inside of a shell. Um, so I SSH'd in to this. Um, I'm going to log in and then SU up and run this command as root. Uh, ZFS, most of these commands need to be done as root. Um, storage management is typically a root type task. Can you do it inside of sudo? Yeah. Now the nice thing about doing this inside of Omni is that it works exactly. So when we look at the ZFS commands, 90% of it works identically across platforms. So if you're doing this on ZFS on Linux or FreeBSD, the ZFS commands themselves work pretty close to identically. So I'll zoom into my shell here. I'm going to start off with a Z pool list. And the Illumos based distributions all have a root pool using ZFS. Uh, it's nice because the update and upgrader actually uses ZFS snapshot and clone um, in order to do your upgrade. So it takes a snapshot and a clone of the root file system and applies changes to what's called an alternate boot environment. Um, quite nice. That is gone into, something very similar has gone into the um, FreeBSD uh, trains and um, it looks like they're working on that on the ZFS on Linux side. So the reason I'm using the um, the Illumos distribution is because it's very easy here um, to create fake disks. Uh, in dev DSK, and I'm going to do an ls minus l here, I've just created these files. I've just done a make file, 100 meg, I think is what I got there. Um, and I'm going to call it disk. Disk A. Um, now you'll see I have another one. So I just, I don't want to use device names here primarily because getting into Solaris device names is uh, like a, I don't know, it's a long job. Um, I just want to use the word disk here. <laughs> and if I, um, you are going to, when you create pools though, you're going to have to use the native device name uh, in, in, whether it's Linux or um, uh, BSD, you're going to have to know dev slash dev slash whatever the name is of the disk. And, and the d mapping of disks is different in each distribution. So for me here, though, I'm going to just use the word disk. Uh, in the um, Illumo space distributions, you can just, you don't have to say dev DSK. You can just give the name of the disk because it looks or searches in DevDSK by default. 
So let me create a, just a real simple pool. Z pool create. And I'm just going to create, I'm going to call my pool big pool. I like to call pools things like big pool, little pool, database pool, web server pool. Um, if there's something that they're doing now in, in most cases, I can just see a big pool for most workloads. We can, we can make enough changes a lot of times in the data set, um, to make, make a big pool work for everybody. Um, so I'm going to say Z pool, create big pool, and I'm going to make it a, beer, a mirror of disk one and disk two. If you are a system administrator, you will love this. If I do a DF minus H here, you'll see that it just automatically mounted this up on slash big pool and it's ready to go. I can use that space. I can, I can start building files or doing things inside of slash big pool, ready to go. One command. Um, I don't have to edit any tab files or um, run the risk of putting in a space instead of a tab or something, um, VFS tab or FS tab or anything like that. I just ex uh, execute the one command. Now I also can add to this pool. So I'm going to just Z pool add to big pool an additional mirror of disk three and disk four. And as soon as I execute this command, this space, and it's faster than me, this space is available in the pool. It's now twice its original size. And I'm going to run Z pool status minus V, and we can actually see how this pool is built. So we see that big pool is a mirror of disk one and disk two, and a mirror of disk three and disk four. And it will, again, automatically stripe across these two um, mirrored sets. And I can keep doing this. I could do this all day. Add mirror three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Um, just keep creating pools that easy. Now we may want to create data sets or take this big pool and start carving out specialty space for different things. So I might say big pool slash where I want to put data. ZFS create big pool. Now when we do the DF minus H, you'll see that I now have an additional file system called data. I can keep creating different space for different things like apps. I might want that read only for my applications. I may want to create some space for um, people. And so on and so on. Each one of those shares space from the pool. The available, the used is all the same across. So if we want to actually control that, we do that in the ZFS settings. We can set up quotas and reservations to control the amount of space that a particular data set uses out of the pool.